What do you believe it will take the majority of Vermonters to support moving away from fossil fuels? What role does the federal and state government have in funding a changeover to high efficiency electrification and other less harmful fuels? Liam Madden, how do you respond to Donna's question? Hi, Donna, the short answer is yes, investment in new energy technologies and infrastructure that helps us use less energy in the first place, things like uh, clustered downtown housing and, and public transportation. Um, longer answer, I am a renewable energy professional. I co won MIT Solve Award for business models addressing climate change. So I'm someone who's dedicated his life to protecting the beauty and the health and the vitality of this planet. And I, I think regenerative agriculture needs to be the backbone of how we approach climate change. So next to Liam to close us out on the Q&A round. A most pressing issue facing farmers is an issue facing so all of us, really, and that is inflation, uh, at least issues that haven't been talked about yet. And inflation is deeply connected to something I know a fair bit about. I'm a renewable energy professional. It's related to energy. And I want to share a fact that is uncomfortable to both the Republican and Democratic parties, one they don't talk about much, which is that if we're to grow our economy at 3% a year, which is what every economist and every politician thinks is a reasonable goal, um, we would use the same amount of energy in the next three decades as we have in the last 10,000 years. And that is impossible, friends. And I'll tell you why that's impossible. One, uh, we have 40 years of oil and gas left at current rates of use. And um, you know, some, some Republicans say, oh, they've been saying that since the 70s. Well, I told you I did my thesis on energy return on investment. It's real this time. There's not going to be more decades. And the Democrats don't like to hear that we can't do it all with renewables, not even close. Harvard professor David Keith said that it would take up to 72% of our land to um, use renewable energy to, to power our economy. So we need to stop and dispel the fairy tale that we live in an economy of never ending growth being a real thing on a planet of finite resources. So if that doesn't wake us up and say we need to expand the conversation away from uh, tax credits and, um, you know, increasing the amount of X, Y, or Z, like, no, we need structural foundational paradigm shifts. And I'm here to talk about that. Some Vermonters up. I am a solar energy professional. I've devoted my life to healing the relationship between the earth and humanity. So with that in mind, I want people to understand that I, I consider climate change a serious risk. Uh, would I be somewhat open-minded about a very short-term expansion of other energy sources? I could be open-minded about that, but in the big picture, the issue of climate change is more of a symptom of our sustainability challenge than a root cause. And it can be divided into how do we remove carbon from our atmosphere which is best done through the right farming practices, which can avoid higher taxes and enrich our lives, our food systems, our farmers. And the other problem is how do we transition to new energy sources um, instead of ones that are running out like fossil fuels. And I see the way to do that is to begin acknowledging that renewables cannot be the backbone of our energy future. And really the only proven technology that can be is a thorium life cycle nuclear energy. Although I am interested in many other innovations in research and development, but we need to be rooted in reality about what is proven to work.